If you are an adult and you're about to get circumcised or you're thinking about getting circumcised, then you've come to the right place. Welcome, this video is about adult circumcision. I've had one, if you're about to get one or you're thinking of having one, make sure you stick around to watch this video. It's gonna be pretty comprehensive. I'm gonna be talking about the reasons that I got one, how old I was, I was an adult, um, aftercare, how you can get it paid for, so you know, NHS or private. Uh, then we're gonna be doing five of the most popular questions that I've got from a previous video that I've done on this. What to avoid really key what to avoid before after and during um and then i'm going to basically do a recap so nine years on from getting it done you know will i still have it all that kind of stuff and any of those kind of questions so thank you for watching if you want to hit that subscribe button that would be brilliant i'm not going to be doing that much more content about uh, this topic this topic is, is only really for people that are you know in that process of thinking about getting it done you've had it done or, or, or whatever. If you've had it done, I hope that this video will give you a bit of, um, you know, positive reinforcement, good mindset vibes. Um, if you're going to have it done, you know, I hope it gives you more information. And if you're thinking of having it done, it will definitely give you more information. If you've had it done, uh, you know, it's okay. You know, you can get through it. And, uh, and, and thanks for watching, guys. So, I'm going to dive into this. Like I say, if you've got any questions, uh, just drop them below and I, I will answer them. Um, but essentially, the reason that I'm doing this video is because when I was going through this, there was a lot of misinformation, a lot of like, you know, fear and anxiety and a lot of very angry people online that, you know, doesn't make making a decision, you know, easier, which I suppose is what you really would like to happen. You'd like to be able to make a decision as easy as possible, especially around something that's as personal as circumcision is to anyone that does have it done. <laughs> Couldn't get more personal, really. Um, so yeah, so, so that's my introduction. Now, the, the reason, and we're just going to talk about the reasons that I got it done. Everyone's reason will be different. And I'm not trying to convince people to get it. I'm just sharing my experience. So, you know, if, you, if you're feeling a bit angry, you know, you'll probably be angry and drop an angry comment. If you're not feeling angry, then, you know, great. If, if you would like to understand a bit more about my situation, um, then I will tell you. So essentially, Without going into too much detail, uh, you know, the, the skin around the head, you know, the, the penis just got a little bit uncomfortable. Now, that was my situation. I basically dealt with this for about two years on and off, trying to figure out what I could do. Uh, eventually, I kind of had enough. And after, after about 50, you know, different doctors, I went to a doctor finally and they said, OK, you know, there's two options here. It's either, you know, try this cream. If the cream doesn't work, then circumcision will definitely fix it. And I remember I, I actually have been dealing with the problem for so long that I, after I'd left that doctor, I remember actually kind of crying happy tears because, you know, undiagnosed medical conditions can weigh so heavily on your mind that you just want some answers. And getting these answers was honestly, it was, it was, it was just life changing for me um, and life changing for my mindset. Now I'll talk about the mindset piece at the end of the video and whether I'd still have it done now, knowing what I know now and all that kind of stuff. But essentially, you know, if you're in that situation, you just want to get answers. So the way that I got answers, um, I'm going to talk about in the, in the how to get it done, which is, you know, either get NHS or private. But essentially what I did as just, just a quick summary is I paid about 500 pounds for a private doctor. Then that private doctor, told me what he thought it was you know either this or this um and and when he then said that he said look if we want to go down the circumcision route he will recommend me to a uh, nhs person and then we'll go that way i'll talk about that in more detail in a minute now how old was i when i got it done i was about 23 so i was a you know an adult fully functioning everything you know <laughs> you know i could feel all the pain um but if you're worried about that kind of thing, don't let the pain side of it put you off getting it done. Now, the only reason that I would recommend getting this done is if you have a problem, if you want to get something fixed, if you don't want to feel uncomfortable. If you don't have a problem, then I would say don't get this done because it's painful. You have to go through the, you know, the afterwards. You know, if you don't have a problem and you still want to get it done, it's completely up to you. Do whatever you want to do. Um, and, you know, the pain is manageable. It's just got to do a bit of aftercare, but I'll, I'll go into the aftercare piece in a minute. But essentially, 
that's how old I was. In terms of getting this done, it can be really expensive if you pay for it privately. Like I say, what I did is I went private for the answers, you know, because I'd been to so many GPs at this point that I was just sort of sick and tired of the same old repetitive people either not knowing, and I suppose I didn't know either, so they were just trying the best. But essentially what I did is I paid for a private doctor and the private doctor told me what it would could be. We tried some different treatments, that didn't work. Um, so we then went for the operation. Now, I didn't have the money to pay for the operation. So, and this is related to the UK. So if you're a UK person, then this will still be relevant. You can go private for the answers and then they can refer you to the NHS to get it done on the NHS for free, which is what happened with me. So I paid about £500 for the private appointment with the doctor um, in London. Then what I did, but you can get them all over the country, I'm sure. Um, and then what I did is that, consultant referred me to um, the GP, I think it was, to say that, you know, this needed to get done. I went to the GP. They then referred me to that same practitioner's NHS hospital. And at that NHS hospital, the same doctor who I pay for privately, I was then seeing through the NHS. So you can get it done that way. And that way, you know, you can basically save money and it's not going to cost you thousands and thousands of pounds. That's what happened with me. So if you're interested or you've got any more questions about that, drop that below. But that's essentially all the information that I have. Um, went private. The private consultant referred me to the NHS person. The NHS person referred me to a specialist. And then I got the operation done there. So that, that's what happened with that. Um, so I suppose I'm going to talk about actually the, the the procedure and getting it done so once you go through the referral process and and everything's approved to get it uh, done then what happens is you know you just need to go and get it done so you get an appointment to go to the hospital it's better to get some people to go and pick you up i was just going to go do it on my own but then at the end i, I got my mum and stepdad to uh, come to the hospital and pick me up afterwards and um, i went in there or that they dropped me off at the hospital you then, you know, put a gown on and, you know, see the nurses, see the specialists. They then, you know, put you under, sedate you. And that's all you know. Um, people have been asking what kind of, you know, I don't know, cut did I get? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't ask. Uh, they didn't tell me. Um, but if you don't ask them, they don't tell you, you will get something. If you really care about that kind of stuff, then, you know, I'm sure you could maybe have a conversation about it. Um so yeah, then essentially you wake up and after you wake up, you don't really feel anything because you're still kind of, um, you know, sedated. You still feel, you know, pretty high on the, you know, the morphine or whatever they give you. Um, and then after that, you can't really see anything down there. It's all bandaged up. So, you know, you can't see anything and, the, you know, essentially they just tell you to go home at that point. So you go home. It's best to just not do too much because I remember I was walking around feeling fine and then I actually almost passed out. So it's best to just sort of, you know, take it easy. If you've got people with you, you know, allow them to do things for you and just sit down and take it nice and chill. We then got home and then it was a matter of, okay, now I'm at home. I need to just wait and, t and take time. So I've got something that I you, that you need to avoid, uh, and I'll t talk about that in a, in a second. You know, which is the mindset piece. But I was at home. Then you start to recover. Like in in the mornings, it can get a little bit painful. So you just want to like you know remain chill, remain relaxed, and you know don't get excited or try not to. Um, and then what 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 will happen? is you know the bandage might fall off or something and then you've essentially got stitches in there which doesn't sound that good and it doesn't look that good either i think the main thing that i would advise anyone to do is just to remain calm <laughs> don't panic you know you've had an operation so it's not going to look the best down there it, it will take about you know say two to six weeks i think for me it took about maybe three weeks that kind of thing till the, you know, the stitches kind of like fell out, maybe a bit longer. 
But as long as you just, you know, don't over fuss, don't mess around with them, you know, they will drop out on their own, the dissolvable stitches anyway. Um, if you have stitches that need to be taken out, then I think you need to go back. But for me, it was just a matter of uh, waiting for them to, to fall out. Now, you're going to have uncomfortable moments during this period of time because you don't know what's happening. You can't see anything when you can see it. It looks a little bit you know, crazy down there. One thing that really helped with me was wearing like tight, um, you know, like boxes or tight sort of like, you know, briefs because it just keeps everything compact once the bandage has, you know, fallen off and you don't have the bandage on there anymore. You want to keep everything nice and tight. That's from my experience anyway. Uh, if anyone's got any other experiences, you know, put them in the comment section below. I'm sure everyone will find it very helpful. Um, and and in, in terms of aftercare, you know, it, like I say, it took about six to, no, about two to three, four weeks for it to kind of like heal to the point of almost normality. Um, you know, things that help, like I say, tight pants, um, don't wear loose baggy things because it kind of like rubs and you want to re reduce as much friction as humanly possible. Um, and I suppose, right, so now I'm onto the things to avoid. Now I've got a couple of these. The main one, like I'm quite a confident and positive person. One of the main things that you need to do is protect your mindset during this period of time. You don't want any negative Nellies. You don't want any like, you know, like circumcision crusaders. You don't want any like crazy viewpoints. Um, one thing that happened to me, I actually knocked myself out through negative thought, which, you know, which, which highlights the power of thought. But essentially, I was in the back garden with my mum and I remember... I was on my phone. I felt absolutely fine, absolutely fine before this. And then I found a blog online, which was a guy's experience on, you know, having it done and what happened afterwards. And essentially, I remember, you know, it said day one, it sc scrolled down loads of words and some of the words were, you know, they were fine. Then pictures at the bottom, the pictures look terrible because they will look terrible day one, day two, all that kind of stuff look horrible. Don't look at it. I would avoid looking at pictures of this kind of stuff, especially if you haven't seen it before. Don't look at it after you've had the operation done. And essentially what happened is this blog went on for way longer than, I, than it, ha it actually took me to heal. It went on for way longer than I know that other people have taken to heal. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it is possible. But you just want to remove that negativity from your mind. Just focus on the positivity. Because what happened with me, as I was scrolling through this article, I started to, you know, doom scroll and panic more. And the more I scrolled, the more I, you know, panicked. And essentially, I panicked so much in my head that I thought, you know, it would never heal and it was a mistake, all that kind of stuff. And... That's basically when I knocked my own, knocked myself out, and the next thing I remember, I'm being led inside. You know, with you know my mom sort of like holding me and trying to like get me inside. So that's what I would 100% avoid: avoid looking at pictures of this stuff, avoid negative um, people, avoid <laughs> avoid avoid negativity, and avoid looking at pictures of this stuff because you know you just want to focus on your own healing journey, not on anybody else's you know bad. Uh, you know, situations. You want to just focus on the positive. Um, so that's basically things to avoid, or, you know, positive mindset, avoid negative people, and, you know, articles that don't add to, you, you know, your general sense of well-being. Avoid them. So the five questions that I've been asked um, on this, you know, I'll, I'll put them here as I'm answering them, is, you know, how long did I wait before I got it done? I waited about two years, uh, saw loads of specialists, um, and then basically just had enough at that point. Um, someone asked, you know, what are the benefits or the limitations? For me personally, because I wasn't feeling fantastic before, the benefits were I now felt fantastic, now felt normal. Um, and if you have a problem, you know, and this would fix it, then that is the benefit. If you don't have a problem, then for me, I wouldn't have it done because there might not be any benefit after. There might be some benefit. I don't know. I've not had that experience. But for me personally, in my experience, um, there was an issue before, no issue afterwards. But I suppose I'll just take a quick side break on that. 
um, and why mindset's so important. Um, after I had the operation done, I remember I thought that the issue had come back and I was really lost for a period of time. I was, you know, really depressed and, you know, I thought, oh crap, you know, what can I do now? I've already had it done. I can't, you can't rehab it done. Uh, I actually went to a doctor to see if I could rehab it done. Uh, but truth is, once you've had it done, you can't have any more done. Um, and, and at that point, I essentially just gave up. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I've done everything I can do. I'm just not going to focus on this thing and I'm just going to carry on with my life. And the weirdest thing was it fixed itself. So now I'm going to touch on this when I go back to my, you know, like my thoughts on would I have it done again. After I kind of fixed myself in my mindset, I thought, Jesus, did I even need to have it done in the first place? I'm not sure. Maybe it was, you know, a mindset thing. Maybe it was psychological. And maybe, you know, you build something up into an issue in your head. And then you have to do something about it. Whereas if you just zend out, unfocus on this problem, realise that there are other things, you know, that are, well, I say other things that are more important, but when you're going through this thing, it seems like the only thing in the world, and I completely understand that. And if I could talk to myself back then, I don't think I would have cared. I think I'd have been like, shut up, Joe, I'm going to have this operation. So, <laughs> you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and... If I could go back in time, I'd probably still have it done because I wasn't there mindset-wise um, where, where I am now. So that's a little little break there. Uh, does it reduce um, sexual pleasure? It just changes it. You know, it's just different. I, you know, for me, I wouldn't say it makes it worse. It's just different. You know, you can have just as much of a good time. So... And that's funny, like I can directly compare both and it's still hard to kind of explain. So the bullet points are, if you have a problem, then it's worth getting it done and the sensation will just be different. So it doesn't really make that much of a difference. You know, you just have to adapt to, you know, this different world. Um, NHS or private. So like I say, I went and I went private to get the uh, the answers. And I went NHS to get the action, the expensive treatment done. Um, and then the five is the recovery question. How long does it take to recover? Uh, for me, like I say, I read that blog and it was talking about six, you know, six months, which is crazy. Um, and if it does take you that long, then, you know, you know, let me know how that goes, because that must have been really tough for you. Um, for me personally, like I say, it took about three weeks. So, you know. There's no point in scaring yourself too much before you get to that stage. Just go with the flow because, you know, likelihood is it will heal in an earlier time frame um, and you don't need to over panic. You know, if you panic before it happens, you, you panic twice. And I definitely did that. So if you can avoid doing that, I would 100% recommend don't panic before. Um and yeah, like I say, you know, it's all bandaged up. So you just want to um, essentially, you know, keep it dry, keep everything happy. And um, yeah, go like that. And then the, the last part, so it's been, been about nine years since I had this done. You know, my thoughts, um, it helped me when I needed help. And I felt so much better after. I even felt so much better just having an option to have it done. And if I didn't do go to the private doctor to get the answers then I still would recommend to myself that I had it done because it at least gave me some options, um, you know, to physically change some things and, you know, try and help my own mindset there. Would I do it again? I think now with my mindset that I have at the moment, I don't think I would need to have it done. I think I could fix it by just not focusing on the problem so much. Um, but back then... There's almost no way I think I would have been able to communicate that with myself, um, you know, without being told to fuck off. So, 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 you know, you can't change things going back in time. So I, I would still have it done. Um, but now, if I was going to have anything done, I would try to just step back, not focus on the situation so much and, and see if that made any changes. So, you know, if you're mature enough or mindset mature enough to do that, then it could be worthwhile. Just completely don't focus on it. And also stop, you know, messing around with it. Um, 
and, and, and that essentially, guys, is uh, my last piece. You know, also I say, you know, if you, it's not necessary for you, then, you know, maybe don't have it done. If it is necessary, then have it done. It's completely up to you. And I was really happy that I had it done. It gave me more options and made me feel more free. And and like I say, the sensation is is just as good and it's just different. So, so yeah, guys, I've wanted to make this video for you for years really and I was a bit scared about making it I didn't want to sort of put myself out there but now I don't care <laughs> so so you know if you've enjoyed watching uh, or listening to my experience you know do let me know in the comment section below because I'd really appreciate that if you have any burning questions that you'd like to ask and I've not managed to get to it pop it below and um, if I have managed to get to it just still pop it below anyway you know uh, I, I really appreciate people asking open and honest questions and even if there are negative comments in this comment section below I'm not going to delete them um, because I think it's important to see what's out there um, and I will always respond to all the comments um, so, so regardless let me know what you think thanks for watching guys like I say I've wanted to do this video for, for years it feels uh, quite um, quite monumental that I'm finally doing it. So so thank you for watching, guys. If you want to hit that subscribe button, that'd be great. If not, don't worry, I'll catch you next time. And uh, thanks for watching. Over and out. Circumcision video, done.